it's 2060, I'm 77 years old. And global climate change has done tremendous damage to our planet and wiped out a huge part of our population. I'm in a refugee camp in Brazil, and it's the middle of the night, and my granddaughter wakes me up and she tells me to keep quiet, and she sneaks me under the fence in a hole she found, and the two of us walk through the night, and as the dawn approaches, we come over the crest of this, this road, and we see this city out in front of us, and it lays in ruin completely destroyed. And my granddaughter looks up at me, tears streaming down her face, and she said, why didn't you do anything to stop this from happening? That was a dream that I had four years ago, and it really rocked my world because it wasn't just another dream, it was a dream that I could see as an actual possible reality of my future. And I saw that I could not be that old man. I could not respond to my granddaughter to that question. And it haunted me for the next nine months until I was sitting, watching a four-hour lecture by a gentleman named Graham Sait, who proceeded to open up a new part of a conversation that I had thought I had been part of for the last 10 years previous of my life. Um, what I got was a new view. I uh, was 29 at the time, I considered myself in the you know, upper 95th percentile of people who know what the heck is going on with climate change in the world. And here came along a new idea that I had never encountered before. So that was the moment where I said, wait a minute, if I don't know about this, if I have no idea about this, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people in the world have no idea about this solution. So it was that same day, uh, myself and Ryland and a couple other, Ryland Englehart, my co-founder of Kiss the Ground, declared that we would share this story. So our new view was that we can do this, and our new action was we have to share this story. And I want to get to it. Here it goes. So I like to start by giving people the concept that Lauren was talking about is a new carbon story. Carbon is not our enemy. We've kind of demonized carbon dioxide and carbon over the last several years, but it's really the building block of everything alive. So it's important that we go back 500 plus million years ago, when the Earth didn't look like it does today. There was only fungi and bacteria on the land because it was so hot. There was so much CO2 in the atmosphere that it made our global warming look like nothing. But then, plants came out of the oceans onto land, and then all of a sudden everything changed. The carbon up here had something to go into. Everything alive, the soil, the plants, all the biomass. That's why we got our balanced climate that allowed for humans to evolve in this amazing world that we know today. So I like to give an example because we learned photosynthesis in high school, but when I ask people where does the substance of a tree come from, the majority of the time, 90% or more of the time, everyone says it comes from the ground because the plant, the tree or the plant has roots. But that's not really the case. We gotta really, we get the chance to see trees completely differently. We get to see them as the tree came out of thin air. It's a really great way to look at it because the carbon from carbon dioxide connects with hydrogen from H2O water and it gets carb makes carbohydrates in the the tree or the plant builds its whole self literally out of thin air. So now we get to see trees as magical things that come out of thin air. So where does soil come from? Well, turns out the same way. The carbohydrates, the sugars that the plant creates are pumped into the ground. I like to call it the big exchange because we used to think that soil was just made because leaves fell to the ground and over time they decomposed and made soil. That's only a fraction of it. The majority of this, the important soil comes because the roots are exuding sometimes up to 80% of their carbohydrate sugars they're sharing to the organisms, the bacteria and the fungi primarily. Why would they do that? Well, it's an exchange system. The fungi and the bacteria are actually accessing minerals in the soil that the plant root has a hard time accessing. So that's the change. The, the 
sugars are given to the bacteria and the fungi, and they give the plant minerals and hard to access water. It's an amazing 500 plus million year uh, evolved relationship. And that's what created the fact that our soils hold more carbon than all of the atmosphere now and the biomass combined. But you gotta remember, before it used to be up in the atmosphere, now it's in our soil. So we know that this works. And here we go, we went from 500 million years ago to the balanced climate, and I ask, well, what's the problem? Well, the way we've been doing farming is the problem. It essentially stops the system, nature's amazing technology, from working. So we, we look at this picture. The Fertile Crescent, the Middle East, used to be fertile. But farming, over time, degraded that soil. So farming has now, for example, in Iowa, sometimes we're losing 100 tons of topsoil per year, per acre. That's in a bad case, normal case, five tons per year, per acre. That's a lot of topsoil. Why is it happening? We leave the soil bare. We've all been driving down the highway and seen farms and just thought to ourselves, that's just what farming is. We just leave the soil bare. But where does nature just leave the soil bare? We're exposing it to the heat from the sun, which is oxidizing it, turning it into carbon dioxide. It's allowing for wind erosion and water erosion. We till the soil, taking all those fungal networks and just destroying them, and we spray on chemicals. Those chemical pesticides aren't just killing the pests. They're also killing up to 120 beneficial organisms at the same time. So we call this, what Lauren talked about was the degenerative model. We have the view that our farming will result in degraded land. So you guys have often heard the word fallow. We, we let the, the, the acres of land rest for a little while and let nature recuperate. We basically assume that we mess it up and we need to let nature fix it. So then we came up with the sustainable model. But the definition of sustainable, guys, look in the dictionary, says able to be used without being completely used up or destroyed. How inspiring is that? Okay, so that was our response to noticing that we're degrading everything and our, and our populations keeps growing. So why don't we use nature's model? If a tree can become a forest just by creating more seeds or, or your hand can rejuvenate, regenerate, why do we assume our farms can't? They can. The solution, grow soil. Welcome, my friend, Gabe Brown, Farmer Brown. Yes, his name is Farmer Brown, and he lives in North Dakota, one of the driest regions in the United States. He started with completely depleted land because he was doing conventional farming practices that I had just mentioned. A series of circumstances forced him to not be able to get money from the bank anymore. He had to turn to a new model. He started regenerative. Now he has over 8% soil organic matter, starting with 2% soil organic matter. What did he do? He That's Gabe, by the way, with his son. Stopped using chemicals. He started, instead of tilling, he started doing no-till. Instead of leaving his fields bare, he started using cover crops, so that photosynthesis was always pumping carbon into the ground. It's not just farmers like Gabe who can do this, who are doing this. We can do it in our own backyards, in our cities. The next time you see a a vacant lot, just for hey, why isn't it pumping carbon into the ground, restoring all the carbon and, and making our watersheds alive again? So the, the choice is ours. It's really simple. We can choose healthy soil or dust. So some things for you guys to take away today. You can grow something. Now that you know how it works, next time you're growing something, watch this process occurring right before your eyes. The plant is building itself from thin air, pumping carbon into the ground. Compost. You get to make a probiotic for the soil that will literally allow the soil to rebirth. Lastly, share this message and support your farmers who are doing this work. We can all make a huge difference because this story is so new. And guys, it's not just fringe groups like ours. The NRCS, USDA are picking this up. All the major environmentalists are now saying soil, oh my gosh. We're getting New York Times articles. We're getting Scientific American articles. This is getting out there. The party is getting started. This idea is real. It's living all over the world. And you can help to usher it in as the new view for humanity called regenerative. I want to end with a song that my dad and I wrote.